Hi, I'm Emma Baker, and we're here with the critically acclaimed uh, Jason Reynolds, who has also been recently named the National Ambassador for Young People's Literature. So how has your day in Greenwood been so far? Uh, it's been good. I mean, I've been to Indiana a few times. Um, I don't think I've been to this school, but it's been, it's been lovely. The kids are wonderful. I've been uh, treated kindly. It's good. Yeah. Nice. And do you currently have a new book in the works? And if so, can you tell us anything about it? Uh, so I have a lot of things in the works. I mean, there's a book coming out in a couple of months, actually, um, called Stamped. And really what I want to do with it is shift the way we're teaching history in schools and kind of push back a little bit. It's, it's the, the definitive history of sort of race in America, and it kind of talks about how we got where we are today um, and gives a little more information and context so that we can better have informed conversations. You know, It's healthy for, I think, all of us to start to lean into those conversations, but there's never been anything written with young people in mind. And this book is just for you and your generation to have the language to have these conversations in a way that's much better than I think we as adults have been having. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, who or what inspired you to become an author? I mean, for me, it wasn't really, I mean, I grew up with a lot of music, musical influences, and so that was a part of it. But also, I come from a storytelling family. You know, I come from kind of family that sits around and lies to each other all the time, you know, see who can make up the best ridiculous story. And, and we pretend like we believe them, but we never really believe anything because we know it's all lies. But it, but it made for a sort of a household where you understood what a story contained. You knew how to engage people and how to make people laugh and how to make people cry. And you could kind of do all these things at the dinner table in my household. And so I think that was also a part of it. And then lastly, I think I just really wanted to be able to tell the stories that I never heard when I was a kid and to tell my own stories. I mean, a lot of this stuff is coming from my personal experience. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of working that stuff out in the midst of telling these stories. Nice. And then I've read almost all of your young adult books. Mm -hmm. So, and they all feature some sort of violence, whether it's like people beating each other up, gun violence. Uh, um, is that something you dealt with growing up, or where exactly did that influence in your stories come in? I think, you know, I think violence is something that we we don't like to talk about. It's not sort of a comfortable topic, but I also think that our, our country, as much as we love it, I think we have a hard time talking about anger in a real way. And I think my books are, less about violence, more about sort of what does it mean to be angry as young people, because I was, and a lot of my friends were, and a lot of young people I meet every day are angry about something. And it doesn't mean it always shows itself as violence, but it does mean at some point we have to have real conversations about the true emotions that young people are having, whether it's fear or insecurity or anger, um, trauma. These are very real things that live in our bodies as kids that show themselves in ugly ways as we get older. Um, and my job isn't to sort of glorify any of it, but to say that I acknowledge it's there and to bear witness to the lives of, of our youth, um, to honor them as human beings and anger as a part of our human experience. Um, so what is a hidden talent that you have that not a lot of people know about? Oh, goodness. I can cook. Uh, I can I can, cro I can make anything with yarn. I can make a whole suit with a couple skeins of yarn in a couple of hours, you know, like I, I grew up doing that. Um, a lot of things, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I could decorate a house with my eyes closed. You know, I love any of that kind of stuff. I'm more of like a crafts guy, you know. I also was an athlete. Like, lots of things about me that I never talk about, but there's lots of parts of my life that, you know, I, are still active and I still tap into. Super cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, how confident are you usually in the stories that go on to get published? Um, and have you ever had a novel that you didn't feel super well about, but you like, it did really well? Yeah, all of them. All of them. I don't think, look, as an artist, you make a thing that you've spent years working on, toiling over, and people judge it in days, right? So I've spent two years to make a thing. It comes out and two days later, there are reviews about whether or not people think they like it or not. That's an agonizing feeling, right? It's like, I've given my life to this thing and you get to say that you hate it. 
and I can't do anything about that. So I never am secure. I'm, there's always insecurity there, the insecurity that keeps me editing and editing and editing until my editor says, no more. Like, that's enough. My agent says, yo, like, let it go. We're done. We're going to put it out. But if it was up to me, I would edit and edit, and none of these books would have ever hit the store because I just am so obsessed about making sure that it's right. And it never quite feels right. No matter how confident people think I am, no matter how successful I've become, uh, every single book I'm scared to death. Yeah, and then when you plan and write your stories, how different is the end product from the storyline you originally visualized? You no, know, there's no planning involved. You know, I learned when I was in school that I hated to outline. It always felt like work before the work. And I was kind of like, why would I want to do work and then do work? You know, I'd rather just get right to it. And so I just kind of dive in. I usually have point A, point Q, and point Z, right? I know what's going to happen in the conflict, and I know how to end it. But I don't know how I'm going to get from point to point. And I think that's part of the adventure of writing. We have to remember this isn't a science. It's an art. It's creativity. And if I'm not having a good time making it, if it isn't adventurous to me, it won't be adventurous to you. Um, and then our last question is if you were able to go into any book and be any one of the characters, which would book would you choose and who would you be? If I can go into any book and be any one of the characters, the book, that's a good <laughs> question. I don't know. Probably like, who's like the coolest character I've ever read? Because that's be, that would be my answer. <laughs> you know I mean? But I don't know who that would be. I mean. I'd be like the lion and the lion, the witch in the wardrobe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's a, I have to think about that. That's a really good question. I mean, every character is so flawed in the best books, right? Because even if I were to pick a character, it would probably be in a character. It would probably be a character in a book that I hate because the character, because the books that I love, all the characters are so flawed. It's what makes for a good book, right? So that's what our lives really are, you know? And so I don't I don't really know. It'd probably be some kid, though. It would probably be somebody really young who has a lot of sort of personality or somebody really old who has a lot of personality. Everybody in the middle is like in the muck and the mire, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. Thank you for doing this. And that was our interview.